project is called Sensory Skin, and it's based on using current technology but implementing it in a better fashion to serve different purposes. It's kind of like a wearable shirt version of Fitbit. Pretty so much. Better? Yeah, better. <laughs> um, what yeah. So, uh, even in organizations like NASA, you know, there's the advanced health monitoring, but they're big, bulky, and convenient. And even the wireless options are still too simple or just inconvenient at all. The uh, current, most current that I've found um, advanced health monitoring system used by NASA is a small chest mounted computer, for lack of a better term, that is, has wired connections like an ECG or an EKG that physically attaches to the body and then is wired back to the computer. So a wireless version would be much more useful and accurate and more user friendly and fit under scenes much more easily. So just to just to just to have it explain what this picture is right here. This is a picture of your core and um, as you can see, the darker it is, the, the uh, hotter your body is, essentially. Um, so this would be either when you're in the process of working out, you just finished working out, and then it goes back to room temperature. So that's what the, this picture is right there. I think we left the transition timer on. Did we? It might have. Um, uh, yeah. And then uh, the suit itself would you be... a question? Oh, yes. Um, Zero degrees Celsius. Isn't that 32 degrees Fahrenheit? I don't think that's room <laughs> temperature. It says room temperature. I think it's stating the environmental temperature. Yeah, probably. It's the effects of the body versus yeah. uh, like in accordance to the temperature of the environment. Yeah. This would be the idea of like a compression <laughs> suit. I think we think we'll Yeah. So this would be like the compression suit, an example of it, a way that you would then attach the sensors to, and that would be the wearable portion of it. The objectives of the product are sensors that are comparable to current monitoring, de uh, monitoring devices, as well as being sweatproof and waterproof, so that way it can be washed and worn and not malfunction, because there's no point wearing something that's not going to work after one use. And then, of course, it has to be uh, preferably wirelessly connected to a mobile device versus the current wired versions, such as the um, the chest mounted one. And uh, our goal is by the end of the, by the expo to have a working suit that will at least display data wirelessly and in real time. Uh, possibly not on a mobile device or an application because uh, with the time frame we're working with, I don't know if we'll have time for that. Because that would require programming. Yeah, that would require a lot. <laughs> So the sensors, basically, they're going to monitor your heart rate, your pulse, your body temperature, <coughs> it's got an accelerometer, which I want to say it monitors monitor movement. Uh, you've got a Bluetooth adapter, so if you can't put it on your phone, you can hook it to your computer. Um, so the Arduino part, that thing, the microcontroller, is the stuff that um, puts all the data together. And then obviously we have the compression shirt where we can sew the sensors into and conduct the fabric. Um, this is actually a sensor. It is a uh, sensor wrapped in the conductive fabric, yeah. which then allows uh, more of a, con not concealed, but protected environment for the sensors to work as well as receive signals from the body and transmit them. The Arduino microcontroller is basically a small, very small, actually. Some of them are as small as a business card sized computer that will run the processes, collect data, transmit them, and uh, make the process a lot easier. Uh, the assembly of the suit would be fairly simple. Um, no, fairly simple practice. You just sew the sensors into the fabric, and then, like in the ideal places, to that it would be useful. So, like a motion sensor be like in your wrists, shoulders, the apex points that you can then monitor posture and movement. Um, then the sensor would be programmed to transmit wirelessly to the Arduino controller.
thank you slide. And then the microcontroller is going to be programmed to collect, transmit, and um, to send the quantitative data to a mobile device or computer. The reason it moves by itself is to keep you interested. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the relevance to biology, we have the biostatistics and the biometric. Biostatistics are the branch of statistics that you know, deal with biology, uh, relating to living humans, people, organisms just in general. And biometry is the application of statistical analysis to biological data. So, <laughs> um, basically, biometrics is turning uh, qualitative body characteristics into quantitative data that you can then reverse engineer to make back into qualitative data for uh, like degrees. Like if you're measuring your body temperature, you feel hot, but then it's 90 degrees Fahrenheit per se. Then you can uh, translate that as well. Then they are hot or they are cold. So the biometrics, the biometrics of body's processes are collected through use of sensors, turn into quantitative data, and then you can define the quality of your state of body. So potential companies, uh, obviously the MLB, NASA, NASA personal and trainers, personal individuals, trainers. bigger um, bigger personal training businesses, smaller personal training businesses. Basically, any field or business that wants to <coughs> monitor the state of, of a person, so if you're a personal trainer, you want to see how they're doing, you can measure their heart rate, body temperature, movements, and it's good for sports because then um, baseball players, they put them in motion capture suit so they can see how they're swinging. It'll also, it'll also help you correct your posture. Yeah, and you can you uh, say you injure yourself, and the, you know you go to the doctor. They say you can't, you know, extend something so much. The, it'll actually tell you, hey, you're moving your arm too much, or hey, you're moving your back too much. You need to sit like this and like this. Um, so it potentially can um, decrease the pain and the length of how long your injury lasts, um, per se. Right. Um, so. NASA, you know, they have some, you know, they're not the most so looking things. I, I like to, I like to call this the pit boy. Yeah, it's uh, it, a 3D printed wrist monitor that was, It looks almost yeah, kinda like pit boy. Like pit boy from the fall. Um, <laughs> and then the military also has one. Um, it's, it's kinda simplistic. You know, uh, preventable, preventable injuries, like I said earlier. And sports teams, they can benefit. Like here's a picture of a fifth or um, batter in a motion capture suit, and he's got all these wires that if you can just simplify it and wire the system, then you'd be able to see quicker, easier, more naturally how he actually swings, how he performs. Plus, it makes you. Yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, individuals, as you see here, we got a beginner, and we got personal trainers and athletes that are helping him. And he'd be able, everyone would be able to get a better idea of, say, his knees are too far in front, say his shoulders are too far back. He then has an idea of how to correct his posture and prevent injuries. And we'd like to thank the Polytechnic University, Dr. Solgar, Sarah Gulzai, and Dr. Gordon with their help and support. And citations that are cut off, there's like 30 of these. Oh, there they go. Okay, so we're